welcome to whatever episode we're on. 11, we think it's 11. 12. We're not sure. Welcome to hanging out with us and uh, checking out Ramona. Good morning. It's hot out here today. It is hot. Mm -hmm. Man. So I was, I found it really funny on our last episode, if you were watching and joining us, I, I don't think I said it, but I had this thought watching Tom of I feel like sometimes our show is like this time where like light bulbs start going off in his head and he's like looking around thinking about what should I say and then all of a sudden he's like oh well I just noticed this and if we do this or so like so much in the last 10 days since our last show has progressed of doing all these things that we didn't even intend to do last time I talked to you it wasn't even the plan and then we were on the show and he's like well what if if we do this and we could do this and we could do this and maybe we should do this and he said I just had this thought and I just had this thought usually turns into <laughs> some projects um so things have escalated rather quickly around here yeah i'd say we have a couple different big things you know on the on the last show we were looking over at the side one of the side panels and discussing like well the water heater is cut out here the uh furnace is cut out they tried cutting that thing with like a three-year-old on three cups of coffee or something there's like scratches all over it and so I didn't really like that and uh, yeah, I had so this thought of like that maybe was what we, happened yeah maybe we should like just replace this whole panel yeah we had this conversation and if we replace the panel <laughs> let's show you have... what happened hold on let's pause this conversation and show you because where we were at was Tom was like I don't really like it being patched do I patch it do I make a hole maybe I just get a new sheet of aluminum well that escalated. Let's go. We'll show you what happened to Tom's patches. Yeah. Want to say anything else about it before we go over there? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, just the, the thought about it was like, if we remove that, then we have access to the subfloor there. Right. Which so we we'll get to that. We Hold weren't on. going to initially replace. Hold on. We're going to show you what happened to Tom being concerned about there being a patch. So he didn't want a little patch. Well, now we're not going to have a patch. Yeah, the hole got no bigger. No patch. He didn't like the holes. So was a little concerned that there were some little holes so we took off a whole section of our trailer yeah. it escalated sure really did. really quick uh, so yeah. yeah so there was little doors we didn't like the little doors now we're gonna have a whole nice clean thing but the thing with these trailers and this project is one thing just kind of leads to another thing and if you do this then you got to do this and if you got to do that then you can do this and then 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 so now that the whole panel is out reverse if you've been watching our show we have said multiple times how thankful we were that the floor was in like decent shape and that we only needed to replace the end pieces so originally we said we thought we just had to do the front piece and then we're like well we can do the back piece and the front piece and the back piece are a little bit easier to remove than the whole middle um, we've talked before if you've been watching about like a shell off repair where they take the whole thing off which we're not doing but without doing that you don't really have access to removing like the middle sections yeah you can still do it but it's a royal pain in the butt yeah it's a challenge so that said, part of the reason so we're gonna do that. it's not that everybody can pull off the side and just get access to that, but I think the other thing with our side was this panel was actually not original. Um, what I found is that a lot of these rivets are not original. And so either like this got scraped up against or got an accident or something, frame's fine, but you know, um, that was damaged. So that said, when they re when they replaced that piece, they cut out some of the C channel. If you remember me explaining that, that's uh, down here below, and that's where the the plywood, the subfloor, like slides into, and then the bolt goes through the shell, the channel, the floor into the frame that holds everything together. So we were missing part of our C channel over here which is not good that's which a very good. vital important piece yeah. the floor was sagging in the section i mean it's what yeah, you could see sag, literally it where sagging. where it was broke the the plywood was like you know sagged down yeah. and cracked and because it didn't have that 
support. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we pulled that panel off. And even when I went out here to go do it, I was still debating. I sat down on the grass over here and searched the internet for probably another 30 minutes before I finally decided, all right, yeah, let's just do it. And um, so we did that. And that was a lot of rivets. Holy moly. Thing I think I together counted them. So many rivets. I forgot what I said. I want to say like 197 or something. It was something Close like to that. 200. Yeah. I was out Close here. Close to 200 He's rivets like, what to do hold on. I'm like, I'm panel. counting. I'm curious. How many? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we got all those out. Now there's a whole panel gone. And then, you know, have you ever read that book? Have you give a mouse a cookie or something? Where, like, if you do this, then you, he wants this, and then it wants this, and then it wants that. So, about that. How's this going to work? Go in there. I'll hand it to you. So, about that bit, about replacing the ends of the floor and not having to replace all of them, but it that way. Yeah. Like so, it. before... You could see right back there. That was the the one piece of floor that we had removed before. Now, if I lift this back up, you will see that we have no, no floor, floor left. <laughs> Zero floor. We ripped it all out. Figured, hey, you know what? Even the middle was like it was okay, but you know it would have been fine, and we could treat it, and it would have been all good. And but shoot, you know what? If we're already taking this much out, you might as well just keep on going, right? <laughs> yeah, he got out this panel and was like, well, now that it's very hard to navigate around here in this thing, like all these crazy moves. Um, so the chat was like, okay, well, if the panel's off, then we can replace this piece, which probably could have been fine, but it wasn't, it wasn't great. And then all these pieces in the middle actually really were fine. But once this piece was off, then it would have been really easy to take the next piece off and the next oh, yeah. piece off. So, you know, you just keep well, it one, one more thing, too. Um, the wheel wells are basically, there's like a lip that kind of comes under the wheel well. And then the subfloor sandwiches it to the frame and holds it there. So now that that wood was off, of course, the next thought is, well, what about the wheel wells? You know, the wheel wells were um, in pretty decent condition. There was a, a couple cracks about three or four inches off the side where it attaches to the shell uh, in very common place. And what I've read up on is that uh, most people, like you just take that and you just pin that all back to the shell rivet the crap out of it and uh, and seal it up really good and you're fine and that's what a lot of people do um, but also some of the you know the the more veteran airstream restoration people on there are saying you should you know the best thing to do is you replace your wheel wells with like steel or aluminum and that way if you get a blowout on the road uh, and the tires whipping around that tire can totally just, you know, rip right through that plastic and mangle it pretty good. And then that's like a really huge pain in the butt at that point to get that wheel well out. Um, I mean, potentially having to rip apart sections of the interior, ain't nobody want to deal with that. Yeah. So, uh, we had a welder come out this week. Yeah, so that's been, that was a whole, whole thing. Update. So, yeah, that's a whole updates. other. Yeah, I'm serious. Like, so much has happened. Yeah, it's been 10 days since our last yeah. episode, and we've done so much. Um, you know, we've been hoping to do as much of this as possible ourselves, but then obviously if there's areas that, like, we just don't have the skill or the tools, then we might have to hire help. So we've gotten to our first outsourced uh, project. Yeah. So it, again, things escalate. Hey, welder, while you're here. Um, we had talked about the last cross members. So cross members are these middle sections. Here, I'll give you a little Airstream vocabulary. So we have like the main frames are these ones on the sides, the cross members, and I'm just learning this, so Tom, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the cross members are these middle ones that connect like these vertical parts of the frame. And then these little bits on the side are the outriggers. So for the most part, our rust is really minimal and we're treating it. We've talked about that. We thought that that was this week's project, but then, 
you know, we added some more. Um, the last cross member all the way in the back of the trailer um, was damaged. And it wasn't so much the rust as much as, do you want to get it? You had it, you were going to show it. Oh, yeah. um, it wasn't so much the rust as much as like, it was like chopped up for some reason. Like at some point they were maybe working on something back there and like pieces of it were cut out. And that cross member in particular is super important for support and for weight. Yeah. So this is part of it. Yeah. This is part of it. But you can see here, uh, maybe there's a whole section missing here in the middle. There was also another section missing over here. Well, the bottom apparently is where a lot of the weight is transferred and a lot of the support is at. So it's very important that you've got a very strong bottom. Well, when you've got pieces missing, uh, that's bad. So yeah. I don't know whose bright idea that was to chop that in the first place, but anyway, they did. Um, as you can see, this is not the entire cross member because we've got a um, you know pretty neat welder guy who looked at that and was like, well, hey man, instead of like trying to figure out, you know, how to fabricate uh, an outrigger or for you guys to buy one and wait for it to get here, the cross member is, is identical uh, to those in some way, shapes or form. So we, we can use part of your cross member. It's still in good condition. We'll just chop the section out. I'll form it and you'll be good to go. And that was did. the you only. Tell the it's awesome. That was the only piece. I've been so thankful. We've said a couple times, like you don't really know till you uncover it. But for the most part, the rest on here is all minimal, and we can treat it. There was only one outrigger, which again, one of these little small, you know, foot long pieces or whatever. That the rest was like, uh, yeah, I, like you could if you kind knock of grab it, the metal and it break it off. Break. Yeah, like yeah. you should not be able to break steel with your hands. So. So it's pretty, it's pretty good though, because I was literally just reading a post yesterday in the restoration group, and the guy had the same exact year and model and everything as ours, and they had to replace twelve of their outriggers and like four cross members. Yeah. It's like, geez. So, anyway, I'd like to show you the uh, the rear cross member that we got done. Came out quite good. So this is another thing with the uh, that rear is. Um, all right, now this is very difficult to walk Here, through this thing. Here, why don't you thing. go and I'll like maybe right. hand it to you or something. So yes. you can either do the like fear and loathing in Las Vegas walk <laughs> over everything. You don't want to walk on the cross members because they're not very like supportive uh, of a lot of weight. So walk on the frame rail, that's a little easier. I'm gonna do the crazy walk carrying this thing to do. You had you what? held it so that I could. I don't know. Work. I thought you could start talking while I brought it. All right. Up. Anyway, so let's get up over here. So the one thing with this this rear cross member is uh, people were saying if if you don't need anything to go through the back, just replace it with a solid piece because not only uh, is that a lot more structurally sound and you know whatnot, but it also uh, keeps out rodents. So one of the things with rodents, apparently they all communicate with each other across the entire globe and uh, and they've informed each other that the rear of the airstream is the best place to get into the belly pan. I don't know how they all know this or how they communicate about it, but apparently they do. Um, because the back hatch, you got a little back door here, it opens up and that's where your plug and different things are at. And uh, if there's those holes in the cross members, they can slip right in if you don't have anything covering it. So anyway, that all said, stop talking. Um, here you go. So this is the new one. There's one hole right here, small one, where the power cord will go through. But other than that, this bad boy is brand new and solid. So great foundation for the rear. Also, there was a, a plate called your rear tie down um, that was really rusted out and that's common just about everybody's got to replace that we got one of those made uh, and then the wheel wells you don't see them now because they're not on there obviously but the welder guy is supposed to be back today actually I was hoping he was gonna be here to to be on the show and you can see him welding but got his own schedule you know 
Um, and you made us wheel wells. Yeah, so anyway, he made the wheel wells. He came in the other day and threw them on here to like dry fit them before he really finished buttoning all the welds up. Um, let me show you actually, okay. Honey, you can't show a picture on your phone to the phone. I can't? I mean, it's not totally no. good. You could just post it in the comments. I will post it in the comments. Post it in the comments. But I'm going to show you real quick because, oh boy. you know, I don't know, when a woman tells you you can't, you got to prove them wrong. So, that is, that's our welder guy welding in that cross member, right? Pretty exciting. Okay. Fun video. <laughs> so, that'll be on our Instagram. You can check that out later. <laughs> So another thing that we didn't even touch on, I think because we're, oh, things are happening to this thing. I guess because we're distracted about all the other things that we've been doing, but I just realized that a huge project that we accomplished this week that we've talked about multiple times is that the belly pan, what? I just said that you shouldn't be like putting weight on the cross members. Oh, we were just both sitting on that one over there. Um, seeing how my train of thought has gone. Oh, so a huge project that we've been picking at for a long time and complaining about on this show, if you've been following along, is the belly pan and the little pieces of it that we couldn't access or couldn't get to, which you may have noticed when you had the whole view of the frame. There's no more belly pan. So yeah. the last section that we couldn't get to once we got this middle of the floor out, we ended up just like chopping it out to get it out of the way, which there's still like some little pieces on it that we try not to slice ourselves with that we can't completely get out until we replace our axles. Um, but other than those couple little chunks, it's, it's totally gone. So that's really exciting too. And doing all this is going to make... Our next project that we're starting working on today a lot easier because now we have 100% access to the frame. So before we had planned on like, you know, working on the frame as much as possible where it was exposed, but then the rest of it we were gonna like get under the trailer and do while we were laying on our backs, which didn't sound very fun. And then even if we did that, you know, there was like wood sitting here so there was no way that we were going to be able to treat like these top pieces of the frame when there was yeah. wood sitting on top of them so now it's 100 percent exposed we can treat it we just um tom went this morning and rented a pressure washer i'm pretty excited about that i think there's going to be a lot of satisfaction that comes from pressure washing things so um that's something that people recommend that we do that we weren't going to do because you know floor you don't want to pressure wash it when you have floor but now we don't so um now there's nothing in here that can't get wet so we're going to wash it and then we're going to clean the frame we've spent a lot of time um like grinding we got wire brushes talking about like a wire brush thing that goes on the drill um so we've been grinding off the rest with those tools and getting off a lot of it as much as possible. And now we clean it and then we can treat it. So I know we said we were gonna do that last week, but. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's the step. We're gonna spray it all down. Probably feel a lot nicer in here. There's so much like just dirt and yeah. crud everywhere on this thing. So yeah. spray it all down. And then uh, we got some buckets and some brushes and simple green and We'll uh, degrease everything and scrub it down really good and then pressure wash it again. And then once that's done, we've got a metal prep that you put all over everything. Lab tracks. That's Big Green's cousin. Uh, same truck. Anyway, yeah, so then we'll uh, do the metal prep and that basically uh, kind of makes the metal like really textury and dry and rough and it allows the the next third step the rust preventative paint coating stuff to really stick on um, and once that's done we got it like a silver color probably gonna look pretty pretty nice on this frame shiny 
pretty nice and shiny and, and new again. And, uh, and that will, it basically stops all the rust in its tracks, it strengthens the frame, it prevents it from rusting, and, uh, and that should, you know, allow this frame to last uh, a lot longer, so. Yeah. Um. Another big um, kind of couple things this week, Delmara uh, mentioned to me, we were working on this the other day, and she's like, you know, one thing I've noticed is you haven't really been like complaining uh, as That's much a huge step. lately about working yeah. on it or not necessarily complaining but like just kind of stressing out and wide-eyed and like anxiety and we won Tom's positive energy he's happy now <laughs> <laughs> so I mean every step I was like oh my god this and that but I don't, um, don't want to say you were complaining it wasn't that he was complaining I think it was um, more like overwhelm and yeah. fear like, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know, like, I don't know, probably like deeper rooted things that we don't need to get into a psychology, like, thing about it, but like, yeah, I don't know how to do it, I'm scared to do it, do I know how to do it, so therefore I'm just gonna like, freak out um, about all the things, and you guys know he's so excited. Sorry, I'll let you talk about your own feelings. Go ahead, I interrupted you. Yeah, I don't know, I guess I'm, um... I don't know. I guess I just feel like we've like accomplished so much in this thing, and everything feels really hard and tough until you like get in and do it. And um, and then once you you're in the middle of it, you're like, okay, well, maybe this isn't the most glamorous part, uh, but it's not very you know difficult necessarily. You just it's just a lot of work. Holy crap! It's a it's lot, a of, lot work. of work. Yeah, I started yeah. tracking like all of our hours I haven't like added them up but I think it'll be interesting to be like oh we did that like if you're have not refinished an airstream you might check in and be like um I mean it basically looks the same as it was the last time they were there like what the heck did they do but like this week we've done a lot of things but getting the floor out we've been getting the floor out and then simultaneously like kind of brushing and grinding and wiping at the frame, okay? We have spent over, I think it was 13 hours last time I added up, just getting the floor out. Like, just removing the floor. That's it? Just on the floor, like this week. I mean, we've done more this week, but as far as like two hours on the floor today, two hours on the floor yeah. that day, like, thir I mean, 13 hours for two people, and mostly Tom, maybe like 1.5 people, I could be a 0.5, um, maybe 0.4, depending on the day, but just like picking up a piece of wood, you know, like it doesn't sound like, um, okay, so they unscrewed the wood, like, I don't understand why that's such a big deal, but it is, like it takes a lot of time, I mean, just one piece of wood, we literally like had to like dig out screws just to find them. I don't really understand how the wood like feels like it like ate a screw. Like how is that screw like inside the wood? But there were places that had like the old linoleum and the glue from the linoleum like over the floor. So I had to like scrape up old glue linoleum to do like a treasure hunt just to find a bolt. And then once you find the bolt, it's rest it out and you can't unscrew it. So then Tom is like taking, like cutting out the square around the bolt to then do that to all of them, to then use all of our strength to pry up this wood, to then go back and grind and cut the rested bolt and like pick it out. Like it's like a whole thing. It's not just like, oh, unscrew the wood, you know? Um, so yeah, two people, 13 screws, hours. Yeah. Most of the screws and bolts and stuff, you cannot just take off, like unscrewing or it doesn't work. You gotta you use like, I mean, I use my wood chisel, bad idea, busted that guy to bits, but um, that worked for a little bit. Uh, that's why they call it a wood chisel, not a rusted bolt chisel. Uh, but anyway, pry bars, the grinder with the cutoff wheel, was the primary thing, and just chopping bolts, and then using, uh, I don't know what the 
heck it is, but basically this tiny little metal rod, you know, you hit, hit and kind of knock them out. So anyway, yeah, long story short. Our daughter's coming in and like sign languaging me, but she doesn't know sign language, so I don't really no, actually know what's I'm happening. Like what are you saying seven to me? Minutes. Seven minutes what? Left our show? Yeah. Seven minutes to yeah, it's 10.30. Oh. But we did start a little late, so. Yeah. Um, minutes to 30 minutes, so. So anyway, I mean, that's, I guess that's our update. So we did all kinds of things we weren't planning on doing. We worked, I think, probably harder in this zone since our last, or like section since our last show. I think we put in more days and hours in that amount of time than we have yet. And that feels really encouraging because there are some times that I feel like, wow, we started this a while ago and we haven't gotten very far. And we've said this week, like, well, if we put in the amount of effort most weeks that we put in this week, we can really like escalate our progress here and get a lot more done a lot faster than like the track that we've been on. Get down so you're in the video, you're just legs. <laughs> um, yeah, so next up, anyway, we're treating the frame. Um, after that, what do we decide? Floor? Yeah, after, uh, I don't know. After the frame is treated, we were then between I, floor and seals. I don't think we fully 100%. Yeah, so we were talking about floor. putting floor back in because the thing is, like with all the floor out, um, you really are, you should probably lift your shell um, so it's not just sitting yeah. on it. But I've I've uh, creatively secured it. I've basically taken lots of chunks of floor um, and I put them into the C-channel because if, if you don't, that, it, all the way to the shell sitting on that, that C-channel is just going to crush it. Yeah, that's important. I talked to somebody yeah, about that you know, online. I was like, what advice do you have? We're doing it without, like they were in the same process, like section yeah. as we are. And I said that, that like the weight of it is going to start to like yeah. crush plus, your stuff. Plus without it being secured, the shell itself can like bow out. And then if it bows out, past the outriggers, the whole thing can collapse down, the whole thing can crush and crumble. Like, I've definitely had a couple moments where I'm like, oh, I don't know if we should pull this board out yet. Um, so anyway, that said, I have, I've put a lot of these different boards in various points all around the trailer. And at, um, what I was noticing though, the more floor we were taking out, these boards were starting to bend up because the weight of the shell was coming down. So. Um, so anyway, I went around this week and I put uh, bolts through the uh, through the C channel and you know in a couple different spots to secure it all to the outrigger so the shell ain't going anywhere yeah. because that was my like we've had a couple days in these last few weeks where the wind was like 50, 60 miles an hour like blowing yeah. super hard through here. We've lost a lot of branches on our trees so like. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like if this thing isn't very secure on the frame with everything apart and some wind like that comes through, that could, you know, potentially blow the, the shell off the frame and be a big problem. So anyway, we've secured it though in a lot of places, so we're fine. And tip for anybody else who does not want to attempt to lift their shell. Um, that said, I think next time, if, well, if we do another one of these, um, you hear that? Do you hear what you just said? We went from, I don't know if I can do this, you're crazy, Delmara, to I just made a life plan to refinish your strips. If, next time, if, next time Tom refinishes trailers. If we do another one of these, then uh, I want, I think we'll figure out how to take the shell off next time. That's what everybody says. The shell Seriously. off is one of those things that people are like, in hindsight, that would have been easier, but when you don't know what you're doing, it feels really intimidating and scary. Yeah. And it takes more space than we have was the biggest. That was the biggest thing. Yeah, like where the heck are we going to put the shell? We're doing this in our driveway. A lot of people have like garages, yeah. you know, big old land. Lots, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, because yeah, then that, now you got your frame by itself. Like I'm definitely one of the next things down the road that I'm a little worried about is putting the belly pan back on because we're going to be putting a, a brand new belly pan which we decided as well and um, it's one big long sheet of metal right so if you if you start it in one section and fasten it down and start fastening as you go 
if that angle is just slightly off, by the time you get halfway, three quarters of the way down the trailer, now you're talking about like a lot off, it's and, off. and you can't fasten it. We'll be fine. We're gonna figure it out. We'll figure it out. But we'll be fine. the crappy part about that, uh, other than that, is that we have to do it laying on our back. Yeah. You know, with the belly pan like right here. Yeah. Where when you take the shell off, people just take the whole frame, flip it upside down, and you just literally lay that sheet of metal on top, do all your rivets, flip it back over. Easy peasy. Tom's got so, plans for his next Airstream remodel. If. If. <laughs> He's in. He's in. If. We got him. <laughs> anyway, that's where we're at. Um, so for one, yes, we want the floor in so that the frame's supported. And also, like you saw our fun little walk, like it is really hard work to get around and work in here. Like something as simple as like, oh man, I left the drill over there feels really hard to get to it. So beside, aside from like putting the floor back in, one of our next big projects is that we need to seal all the leaks and the cracks and the windows and redo all the seals, um, which would be a lot easier to get to them if we could stand on a floor. However, the downside of that is currently the Airstream leaks and the windows aren't sealed. So when you put down a brand new floor, even though we're gonna treat it and weatherproof it, like you don't want it being leaked on um so it's kind of one of those like six to one half dozen to the other of like which would be better to do six to one half dozen to the other what does that mean 12 to one i don't know what's the expression i don't know i've never heard you say that i've never heard it said never heard that said no like some people would say six and some people would say half dozen like tomato tomato you know you don't know about that anyway um there's pros and cons to like both order of operations and if the best thing for the floor would probably be to have the leaks already done and fixed, but we can't really get to the leaks because we don't have the floor to stand on and in the meantime, the frame isn't supported and working on these leaks and the windows, we're gonna be like using tools on the frame, pulling on the frame, pounding on the frame, like it should probably, or not the frame, just kidding, the shell, shell, um, it should probably be supported in order for us to do that. Yeah. So, anyway, I think we're over our time, but that's what we've done, and um, we'll see you soon to show you what we do next. I think we're currently in good spirits and project mode and putting forth our time and our effort in doing things, so hopefully we'll continue to be making lots of progress. Anything mm -hmm. else? Good job changing your energy. That's the happiest update. <laughs> you let us Adios, amigos y amigas.